All right. Thank you for joining us on this interview today. Could you please introduce yourself with your name, major, and school? Okay, my name is Wanchika Sinha. Um, I go to UC Berkeley, and my major is electrical engineering, computer science, with an intent to minor in data science. Mm, I see. So I guess we'll first start off with what made you choose your major up? I would say that it was kind of a process. So since middle school, kind of, I took upon, like, I was introduced to a little coding camp for girls that kind of ignited that little passion in me about, you know, continuing with robotics and like programming and things like that, which kind of went into the whole idea of tech entrepreneurship. So being able to take part in challenges through, and competitions throughout high school kind of paved the path to exploring this electrical engineering computer science and initially I actually applied as an MET major which is a management engineering and technology and entrepreneurship um, program at Berkeley but I was placed into EEC so apart from that I kind of wanted to like combine both business and EEC to be able to create something in the future. That's a fascinating story. So, uh, and for like the university choice, I know that you're from the East Coast. How did you choose to go all the way across the country into UC Berkeley? Um, I'm actually from Toronto, so I'm like outside the country. Oh. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can pretty much think of me as from New York. I live very <laughs> close by. But um, the reason I went to Berkeley was I applied to very few universities and throughout um, the states. However, the major that I got admitted to was probably one of the top in the country and including the world. Also, I really wanted to get out of the province as well as be, part, like, be able to give myself a challenge, to be honest. So mm -hmm. the challenge, not in a negative way, but a positive way. Because like, throughout my life, I have moved around a lot. So from North America, I was born in India. So I kind of moved, but I spent most of my time in Canada and the States being raised here and throughout my life. So the whole idea of moving just made me feel like, oh, it's another challenge, another place. Why not just explore? Yeah. Mm, so rather than like the like there are fear that many people come into with like traveling to new places, you're kind of accustomed to it. So it wasn't really like too difficult, like in a way. Yeah, in a way, like just being in a new place, I didn't kind of go through the whole like anxiety of oh my god new people new faces I have to make new friends what am I gonna do because I was throughout my life I've been through that whole process over and over again so I kind of use the same idea to it however I'm telling you like college is a totally different level <laughs> like compared to high school so there were some challenges to be honest like being able to find the right group to fit in with and finding those little, little groups that you can really vibe with throughout college and finding that group that you can always go back to as a family kind of, because you, you are away from your family throughout yeah, sure. college, living on campus and everything. So yeah. So like from your experiences in traveling, like what was like one tip you would give to others in your same, in like the same situation or they're like traveling to across the country, whether it be a university or a high school or whatever, and just trying to get accustomed to the situation. Like what was one tip you would give? Okay, so one mistake I made in high school was that keeping my mind like closed, being that, okay, I need to find that, that being very picky about people, you know, oh, you have to, I only have to be able to hang out with these type of people. I cannot hang out with the other kind because they're, they don't like, they don't have any interests that are around me or anything. But then in college, I realized that you kind of have to keep your mind open. You have to let everyone in and you have to say to yourself that, you know, it isn't about what you have been through, rather you have to learn from them. So what I, kind of went through in colleges I made different groups with different interests so it doesn't have to always be about myself it's about what I can learn from them even if I don't like them maybe 60% of the time it can be just the 40% that I like them but I also learn from them so that way I was able to better accumulate myself to the environment rather than being very picky and being alone most of the time I was around people a lot and I kind of helped with that open mindset so always keep that and you'll 
it will help you a lot. Yeah, I think that's a great tip for others. So like while we're on this topic as well, like about openness, like what are some extracurriculars that like you find most interesting and in that you have participated in throughout your first year of college? Okay, so I like that part. That's my one of my favorite questions. <laughs> um, so I began um, my first semester in college. I joined a entrepreneurship club, which helped kind of, it's like a mini accelerator. So like pre-accelerator kind of club where you can kind of come up with ideas about different startups that you would like to, and then kind of pitch it in front of a, a uh, group of um, investors slash, slash venture um, capitalists that are in the community of like Berkeley itself. And that was a very cool way to meet new people and kind of continue what I did in high school like have a really smooth transition into the different types of um, clubs and organizations that were on campus. And then the second semester, I try, like I really enjoy um, blockchain because I got introduced to it. So I joined the blockchain at Berkeley Club and I started off as an education uh, team uh, member but most likely next semester, I'm trying to apply as one of the consultants so for so I can kind of move forward with, you know, the startup community and be able to consult different startups about that. Also, <laughs> coming semester, I will be rushing for a sorority, one of the uh, social sororities on campus. So that's another little thing. So, yeah. It's a pretty diverse set of extracurriculars. Yeah. It's pretty nice. So I'm going to change the pace a little bit and go for the college application process. So like, how did you personally feel about the process? Because I know like some people struggle with the essays, others with the just extracurriculars or just even the mm -hmm. test scores, like the ACT, SAT. So like, how did, how was it in your experience? I would say it was hard, especially at the beginning, being able to figure out what college to apply to. Why will I apply to that? What, like, what major should I be choosing? Why choose that? Um, in my experiences, I started off pretty early, especially like having people that surrounded me that were continuously going to college or having parents, friends that were like, their kids are going to college. So I kind of got like the curiosity build up inside of me that I need to start researching early on. So freshman year of high school, end of middle school, I was kind of looking through different types of programs that were around, what should I be doing in high school to get to those programs? So it was helpful in that way that I started earlier in the process and not the last like two years of my high school career. And that kind of made it easier. However, the whole I like main aspect of a college application are your essays as well. So being able to kind of tell a story in those essays or the whole application was the hardest part for me. Like my parents did help me in ways to like kind of help figure out like the third party view on myself. Like what do they view me as? Not myself, rather I asked like my different teachers and like friends, what do you see me as? What do you see my story as? So researching on that part was the hardest, finding that story for my, from my extracurriculars that I chose, the academics that I chose, why did I choose it, the types of courses, the type of like, why me kind of the answer that I wanted to my the college recruiters to really look at I mm, see yeah I do agree like the personal part of the essay is also like one of the most hardest parts of the application process but there's yeah. also like the element of the researching in colleges like because some of the websites are like kind of vague with information so like yeah. how did you go about navigating that kind of part in your research um I would say kind of started off with just browsing like each college's websites because I feel like it might be overwhelming to a lot of people that you know just looking at okay you have to go do this 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 and this to, for me it was just pinpointing out the small details and like writing those down and then going back and just researching one singular thing and being able to find so many videos as well as other people that talk about it online or even just calling up the college itself because I know a lot of people might be, why would they entertain me? Like, why would they entertain my questions as a high schooler? But I feel like anytime in high school, you want to pick up your phone and call 
one of the in, like admission office and be like, okay, I have a question. So these SAT scores, and they would always help you to direct you to the right path. And what, another thing is another great place to look at is I started off my research at Prep Scholar. It's, it's a website, if you have heard of it, and it just goes through everything in a very like brief way. So if you have a short attention span like me, it's a great place to start. Like just look through it. It gives you a very like brief explanation to every single colleges, what is required, what the ways to look at it. There are a lot of articles like that goes deep in and which kind of directs you to other like links as well as people that you can connect with. Also nowadays um, high schoolers have LinkedIn's so being able to connect to <laughs> potential, like if you want to go to Berkeley, maybe connecting with me and maybe DMing me about maybe, okay, I'm thinking of going to UC Berkeley. Why, what should I be thinking about? And I did that a lot in my high school oh. like time. So doing that and even on Instagram, doesn't matter where. I just like if I found someone that maybe knew some, like my friends knew that are going to the university or college, I, I would just hit, like literally does not matter if I know them. I'm like, hi, my name is this, this, and this, and just go for it. Like I had no shame in that part. So that was a, that was very helpful. So do that. Don't, don't be worried. Don't be shy. Just say it out. Cause you got to know the information. So. Yeah. I respect that. Cause a lot of people, especially like me, sometimes when I was initially going through high school, like a bit timid and like we're afraid to go ask for any opportunities. But I see that like, you just went out and mm-hmm. asked anybody you could. So I kind of think that's, really helped you <clears throat> yeah. strong um, and also like for the to wrap up this college application process element like what do you or what would you change if anything because I know like the UC system is taking away the SATs in form of their own standardized system but, like what oh, else yeah, yeah. would you change if you would okay so one thing I didn't like about the UC application for, like specifically mm-hmm. was the questions were very repetitive so uh, personally, I felt like I'm just answering the same thing in like a lot of ways. And something that I like from the common app aspect is that they have one or two questions that are large and you can like kind of express yourself more as a holistic way, I would say. But the UC questions are very specific and they want to go with yeah, a lot of questions are just repetitive. That's one, like, if I had to give one thing for the UC system, just don't make it so repetitive. Like, have diverse questions that kind of hit every aspect. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, I feel you. They're, like, too nitty-gritty with, like, the small details, and they just overlapped in too many elements. Yeah, like. and I, yeah. just thinking about those, like, take some time. So, personally, maybe it might be helpful for a lot of people, but personally, I just felt it was a lot to think about. Yeah, I'd agree. <laughs> so like, we're going to wrap up with one more question before we go to yes. the advice. So I know that you're a data scientist, or your major is like, or the class size is dependent on your major size. Because like some STEM kids, like since general chemistry and biology, have like hundreds of students, whereas like mm-hmm. something like political science or art history, have 30, 40 students at max maybe. So like how was the class sizes and lecture styles for your major? And how did you, how was like your personal experience like this? So um, in terms of class sizes, depends on what subject it is. So for example, courses such as CS, the introduction, like CS 61A, CS 61B that were at Berkeley, very famous ones for under, yeah, um, they were pretty large. They had options for on like being on like off campus and you can watch it, watch the lectures. And personally, I feel like going to big lectures is, is it's an experience to be honest like being that one person that can raise your hand in like the middle of a 500 people lecture and be able to ask questions really helps you like gain your confidence and it was it sometimes a lot especially having like so many kids and the pace that the professor goes at it's like bam 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 like all the like this plethora of information being like thrown at you but you'll get used to it, to be honest. Um, and you will figure out as you go what you like and what you dislike, what classes you feel like 
your brain needs to go to like physically and like be able to understand information or really absorb the information. And the classes that are actually offered online, like as a lecture online, as, as an alternative to the lecture in person that you might find mm -hmm. more beneficial in a lot of ways. But personally, I like going to like in-person lectures because the professors were very enticing in ways that I really liked. Yeah. And <laughs> personally, I feel like doesn't matter what size it is, the lecture, you will feel like it's a different experience. And being the lazy, I'm, I'm going to straight out say I'm very lazy in terms of keeping myself on track if I don't go to lectures and watch the lecture videos again and again. So I personally prefer going in person. So I'm like getting the information right on hand. And for smaller lectures, usually they're put in for um, the discussion times, which really helps to kind of bring down the anxiety of, you know, being a 500 room and being able to ask questions that are personal, more like, focus on yourself. So what your struggles in that uh, course course is and like going forward with that and like the GSIs um, that work with the professors are very helpful in understanding and they understand your problems too. So don't be afraid to ask questions. Yes. Yeah. All right, that's pretty good insight. So for the final tip, like if you could give any tip to a high school student, I know we kind of covered this like in our previous questions, but like any yeah. tip, whether it be about the college application process or just the college lifestyle in general, like what would you give them? Or, like, what would you tell them? Um, in terms of call, like, you, do you mean like it can be about college application or can it be about or, like more focused towards like college in, in general? Like, but like, I, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, I would say again, I talked about being open-minded, yeah. and I feel like that applies to a lot of places, especially. Like if you're choosing an organization or a club, don't always go with what you did in high school. Because sometimes you might find that a lot of things that you did in high school might not, might not be as good as something else on campus. So for example, say, I never thought I was going to join a sorority, but being around that kind of like helped me balance different parts of my life. So that also helped. And I never thought I would like blockchain. So that was something that through my courses I found that, oh, wow, that is actually very interesting. Why not join that? So really keeping that open as well as college is about like, liter and don't be afraid to fail. That's a very cliche thing to say, but I feel like in high school, I was one of those kids that, oh my God, I got a B in this course. No, I cannot <laughs> do this anymore. <laughs> this is not meant for me. But like, be okay with bees telling you like bees are so much better than everything else and it would take a lot of stress off of your back to, like being able to balance out especially being alone not having parents around or your family to constantly come back to and be able to crib about your problems sometimes like find ways to like crib out your problems in other ways <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah especially on your point with the grades like High school is like a completely different experience from college because like with college you have like the brightest kids so like yeah. it's gonna be inevitable that you can't like always get straight A's. And I was told yeah I was told this like end of high school that you will find people that are gonna be way above your like what you were in high school. You, you might be top in high school but like coming into college you will find all those top people from all over the world all over the country coming in to the same college so be okay with the failure and I have found out that a lot of people do go like do find it hard initially to take in that and that kind of affects a lot of their like time in college which shouldn't be the thing like always start with the mindset like the summer before college just start thinking okay it's okay it's okay to fail well I say fail don't like fail a class just yeah. getting a low grade yeah so, yeah all right. Thank you for your time and thank you for joining oh, us. Don't worry. Yeah, you too.